basically now you may be aware that uh, government has made a pronouncement uh, that schools uh, would reopen uh, in June and this is mainly for public schools uh, they have set themselves in a reopening date of June uh, 2020 um, we also in the private sector uh, are working hard uh, to ensure that we are ready for reopening and for the private sector we were actually given a, a slight leeway to say that if you are ready uh, for reopening you need not wait for June provided you have complied you have put in place the necessary uh, you know the processes and measures to ensure that you are fully complied to the health guidelines and protocols and um, the institutions have been working around the clock as I speak to you now I think a few of the basic education providers uh, private providers uh, may have already opened uh, because they put in place all those regimes uh, in terms of health guidelines um, and they also uh, you know, in, you know uh, requested for an inspection health inspection and they were they were cleared because one thing that we also emphasized was that much as we were given the leeway to open uh, before any inspection as long as we are compliant we've done a thorough self-assessment we impress upon members to ensure that before they open they should actually book an inspection and make sure that they have a clear certificate uh, from health officials so as i speak to you uh, on the basic education side a few may have already started but the bulk of them will open next week uh, on the tertiary side uh, i think none has opened as yet they are all working towards opening on uh, you know early june and um, they are all they've also put all the necessary processes in place uh, to ensure that the social distancing the screening of temperatures at the gate um, you know regular washing of hands uh, provisions along the school and also critical is that when they reopen um, most of the schools won't open wholesale they will actually do a phased approach uh, to opening either starting with completing classes um, and then gradually opening the school up like that the sector is uh, constantly in dialogue with government uh, because we belong to both basic education and uh, tertiary uh, education research science and technology and we have been constantly uh, first of all in touch amongst ourselves to reflect on the challenges that COVID-19 has presented to the sector and also bouncing uh, our uh, suggestions, our ideas with government on how they could also assist us to mitigate uh, the challenges. So we have been in constant touch throughout, uh, sometimes through uh, meetings, uh, you know, face to face, sometimes, um, you know, e-meetings and uh, sometimes just even just emails and, and chats. Uh, we are talking to both government through line ministries as well as our parastatal bodies like your BQA, HRTC and, uh, and so on. During the closure, uh, of course, schools came up with very um, innovative ways of keeping the students and children you know, engaged uh, using the e-learning platforms, various platforms. Um, but obviously, um, there has been an effect in the sense that uh, not all the learners were uh, necessarily accessible uh, to those due to several connectivity challenges that we all are alive to in this country. During the lockdown, the Botswana Qualifications Authority also engaged us and asked us to submit a response plan to COVID-19, which plan was meant to uh, actually facilitate schools uh, that as they deliver online, uh, there should be also measures put in place to support learners in the event they are disadvantaged. And so as they open, they will also be guided uh, by some of those uh, discussions and uh, you know, advice from uh, the Botswana Qualifications Authority. The challenges, to be honest, is that uh, because the sector is very wide, first at uh, basic education, there is this whole issue of just uncertainty on the part of parents. They really don't know how safe it is for their children to go to school. Obviously also the capacity by the health and local authorities to do thorough inspections prior to reopening, uh, given the numbers, uh, I think that is also another constraint that we are that we are seeing there, uh, which of course we are working around. Um, then you do have in schools uh, very young ones, you know, particularly those at preschool. Um, uh, they are young, and obviously, really, responsibility of their safety will lie solely once they are within the school premises. Uh, to lie solely with the institutions themselves. And this is an area for which you may be aware. Government has said 
with their own uh, preschools they will open in August, you know, after winter has sort of uh, subsided a bit. But in the private sector, they've given us the leeway to go ahead. So it's an area we've also advised our members to take uh, extra precaution. Now, at tertiary level, uh, there are many, um, uh, you know, dynamics to this. One, it is the issue of new students, uh, because every year, at least uh, there is uh, new students who join the system, but government has since the uh, outbreak of COVID-19 suspended the sponsorship of new students. So that area is still not very clear how and when it will resume, because currently the process is heavily manual, uh, which means it involves a lot of large gathering and exchange of papers and paperwork. Uh, so that is an area. There is also this whole issue about progression from one semester to the next because institutions were at different levels during COVID-19. So whether or not they will progress um, and this plays itself even with specific reference to programs. Programs like professional accounting, your CMA, your BICA, your ACCA, they've actually deferred their examinations. Uh, some have postponed them to August. And yet, you know, the progression from one level to the other is dependent upon the results, uh, submission of results to DTF. So there is that part. Um, then you have um, the workplace trainers. Workplace trainers, um, their role is so paramount to the economy because they skill our, the employees. And during COVID-19, um, for some reasons, they were not able to pay into the levy, which means they can't claim from the levy and hence they can't do training. So. This is an issue we've engaged with the HRDC and they promise to look into it urgently because otherwise it threatens to collapse the entire subsector. Uh, so it's something that we are still in constant uh, discussion with our colleagues uh, in the HRDC. So really the sector has its own very big share uh, of the challenges, uh, just coupled with just the fear of the unknown, you know, what will happen when we reopen and so on. Uh, but I must say that uh, the teamwork, the team effort is so wonderful. To be honest, I think um, we are all in a new uh, world, I mean, a new normal, a new reality. And so there is just a general anxiety out there uh, as to really, even if you, uh, you, you, you are cleared by the health officials to open, but really you just have this anxiety that how really will this new order uh, present itself? And whether this opening will be really truly opening that will be sustained uh, or we may see some spikes in terms of the uh, COVID-19 you know, infections which may then force uh, the sector again to close because we must really be alive to the fact that schools are a high risk area given the you know, amount of the number, the population uh, in schools. So um, there is these anxieties and also parents, uh, especially for at the uh, basic education side. Parents are also generally also anxious to say, really, uh, if I take my child to school, am I not uh, going to be perhaps risking something here and so on? So there, there are all these things where you don't really know whether people will be very free, but at the same time, we can assure them uh, that uh, the schools have put every measure in place to ensure, first and foremost, safety of learners and safety of staff. I am certain that we will win. Um, but it may not be in the short term, to be honest, because if you look at other economies, uh, they are talking really the physical opening of campuses, for example, in the States and other countries, they are talking about 2021 and so on. Um, so it is not easy. Uh, it is something for which we require a lot of concerted effort. But given what I've already uh, heard from our members, uh, I think we are really ready for the challenge and we should be able to go through it, um, of course, with the help of um, uh, our line ministries.